Hi guys, I hope you are all doing well. Let's see today's question. So today's question, we are taking this up from the topic of limits and continuity. And if I talk about the question which is given to us here from this topic, the question tells us that the function f of x, it's given to us here as e raised to negative mod of log x to the base e. So basically it's natural log of x. And the question tells us m and n are respectively the number of points at which this function f of x is not continuous. And also the function is not differentiated. Then the question is asking us to figure out the answer for m plus n. And if I talk about the answer choices that we have been given here, the options are 0, 1, 2, 3. So let's try to figure out the correct answer for the question that is given to us here. So if I talk about how to solve this question, we have been given this function which is e raised to negative and mod of logarithmic or basically I should say natural logarithmic value of x is given. So before starting off with this solution for this question, I would first like to tell you that please do subscribe to my channel and support the channel as well because it takes lots of efforts in making these videos for you on everyday basis. And it is free for you but also motivates me to put up better content and trying to make the solutions as easy as possible so you understand them in a better way. Let's understand this question first now. If told to me f of x is e raised to negative logarithmic value of x to the base e. So if I further try to simplify, I can write this 1 over e raised to mod of log x to the base e. So if I see for this function, I can write this basically as if I talk about natural log of x in the mod and if I find out the signs for that, I know log of 1 to any base is always 0. So any value of x if I put greater than 1, it will give me the function's value positive. So it basically becomes log x to the base e. And if I take any value of x less than 1 or greater than 0, I will get this as negative. So negative logarithmic value. So we have this part of function differentiated. So x, if, even if it's greater than 1, basically if it makes 0, e raised to 0 will also make it 1. So I can write this x greater than or equals to 1 will satisfy this positive value and your x less than 1 but greater than 0 will satisfy the negative value for the function logarithmic value of x. And it should be, x should be greater than 0 because if, if x is 0 or less than 0, the fun logarithmic function is not defined for those values. So what I understand from here is that your function f of x becomes 1 over e raised to negative logarithmic value of x to the base e when x is between 0 and 1. And it becomes 1 over e raised to positive logarithmic value of x to the base e when x is greater than or equal to 1. So this is your f of x. Further, I try to simplify this idea. I get f of x 1 over e raised to this minus 1 which is present using the logarithms, I can write this as log of x to the base e raised to minus 1. This is when your x is between 0 and 1. So if I further try to simplify this idea, I know one condition that if a raised to logarithm of function to the base a is present, I can write this as nothing but a function f of x. So what I can write here is e raised to logarithm of x raised to minus 1 to the base e can write this as x raised to minus 1. So that gives me 1 over 1 over x. That basically makes it x. So when x is between 0 and 1, I get function as x. And let's try to find out what happens if x is greater than or equals to 1. 
So when x is greater than or equals to one, I get one over e raised to log x to the base e. So e raised to log x to the base e is nothing but x. So you get one over x. So I get both the ideas now. So if I further summarize this, I get function as x when x is between zero and one. And when x is greater than or equals to one, it becomes one over. So if I draw the graph for this also showing the changes that happens in x and function f of x. So from zero to one and then beyond. So from zero to one, you have the function as x. So y equals to x is a straight line. And then you have y equals to one over x. So inverse function. So basically that would be a curve like this. So basically as x goes till infinity, your function will go till zero. So basically this is a straight line and this is your one over x curve. So at x equals to one, it starts becoming one over x. Now let's find out one. The question tells us that you have to find m and n are respectively the number of points, which tells us that the function is not continuous and not differentiable. So m represents the number of points at which the function is not continuous. n represents the number of points at which the function is not differentiable. So let's find m. So for continuity, I'll use the idea. We know limit x tends to a minus f of x equals to limit x tends to a plus f of x should be equals to f of a. So your left-hand limit and your right-hand limit should be equals to the function's value at x equals to. So if I do that, let's see what I get. So limit x tends to a minus. So limit x tends to one minus the function's value for one minus was x. So it gives me just putting x. So one, your left hand limit is one. Right hand limit if I talk about limit x tends to one plus f of x, which is limit x tends to one plus one over x which is one over one, which is one. And f of one, that is basically at x equals to one, what is the function's value? At x equals to one, it is one over x. So it becomes one over one, which is one. I see all the three are equal, so they satisfy this idea of continuity. And when they satisfy this idea of continuity, the m, which is number of points at which the function is not continuous, becomes zero, because at all value of x, your function is continuous. So you get m as zero. Now let's find out number of points at which the function is not differentiable. So if I see your function is only changing at x equals to one. So if I find the function's differentiability at x equals to one, so taking the derivative for both the functions where x is less than one, the derivative of that will make it one. And if I see the derivative of the function when x is greater than one, this is for x less than one, for x greater than one, the function's derivative becomes minus one over x squared. So if I put that also as one, for the greater value, it gives me minus one over one square, which is minus one. So one and minus one, I can see it's not equal. So f dash at one, when it's not equal, I understand that at x equals to one, the function is not differentiated. And when the function is not differentiable at x equals to one, for n, which represents number of points at which the function is not differentiable, I get this is one. And this, I got this was zero. So I have got m as zero, n as one. And the question is asking me to just figure out the sum. So if I do that, zero plus one gives me one. So I get the answer for the question and that matches with option B. So B becomes the correct answer for this question that is given to us here. I hope you have understood how to solve this type of questions, which deals with the ideas of using the concepts of limits, continuity, and differentiability. I'll see you again tomorrow with some other question from some other topic. And we are going to continue our series of questions on JWE mains. So stay tuned for more videos to roll out. Also, if you're enjoying these videos that we are doing on everyday basis, please do like the videos as well and do subscribe to my channel and share this channel with your friends also who are involved in the preparation of questions on JWE so they can also take the benefit.
from these questions which we are solving on everyday basis. Thank you.